Hello, everybody. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Sign the Seal with LaShawn and Samantha. Um, today we're here. We're going where everyone's here, hopefully, to get ready with Ron uh, with the Notre Institution and also She Listens. Um, we have a special guest today. Um, but before I talk about our special guest, we're going to talk about my co-host, allow her to introduce herself, and then we're going to get into the topic for today. Good morning, LaShawn. Thank you. This is Samantha Smith, owner of She Listens Notary and Business Services, uh, representing the great Georgia Notary Nation. I am the Georgia Notary for Georgia Notaries, and I am just one half of the dynamic duo that is uh, signed and sealed. We're so glad that y'all are joining us this morning. Um, we're just going to go over a few things. Uh, for those of you who have been supporting, un supporting us in this new year, we started implementing something called parking lot rules. And so for any of our newbies, we just want to go over a few quick things. One, we're going to stay on subject today. Today, we are talking about getting Ron ready across the nation for all notaries who are interested in all things Ron. So let's be respectful of our guests and make sure that we stay on topic about Ron. Any personal questions about your specific business or your specific state, feel free to reach out to LaShawn and I separately um, after the presentation is over. Uh, second, again, no personal questions. We will not be addressing anything dealing with LLCs or business names or anything like that. So if a question pops up in the chat and we don't address it, we'll come back to you at a later time and address that question. Uh, thirdly, no bashing of any companies, no bashing of any other notaries, no bashing of training platforms. It's all love here. This is a safe, another safe space and community for notaries to gather information and share information. And then lastly, we are not attorneys, nor are we financial consultants or advisors. Any questions you have about your finances or um, any legal questions, please direct those to the appropriate individual. So who is ready to get Ron ready on this morning? Who's ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, and then too, Sam, <clears throat> you know, just to go over it, because right now, you know, we have to um, change things up and I wasn't able to not stream in the Facebook groups. So right now, just a heads up for everyone that right now is watching in the Facebook groups, um, you have to give Facebook groups permission so that we can see your name. Um, also, too, in the face, if you're watching right now in a Facebook group, um, anything that any links or anything I put into the comments, you won't have access to it. But if you would love the access to the con to the links and you want to see, you want to engage with us, um, you can hop on over to the YouTube channel at the Notary Institution and you will be able to, um, you know, click the links and also engage with us in the comments. Yes, it's being recorded. And as long as you are on that email list, I will make sure um, that the video is being sent out to you um, before 6 p.m. today, Central Standard Time. Um, but, you know, not to digress all into that, um, we're going to go ahead and introduce our special guest, um, Miss Jacqueline from Notarize. Let's see. Yes. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am super excited to be here. I am Jacqueline Phillips. I am with Notarize, as the ladies have said here. So happy to join you. I am the manager of onboarding and compliance at Notarize. I've been with Notarize for five years. Um, I am notary number one. I have learned everything Ron with Notarize and I'm here to share what I've learned. Um, I love the forum of sharing. I love the safe space. Um, I like the no bashing. I like all the rules that um, Sam has already put in place uh, because it's all of us learning together um, as mm -hmm. we trailblaze this brand new um, remote online motorization world that we're all living in. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Jacqueline. Yes, yes. And uh, fine. just good morning to everybody. We are going to jump right into the questions. We have a few that we'll get this party started with. But as you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Ms. LaShawn is monitoring that. So the first question is, just in a nutshell, explain what Ron is for the people. All right. So what is remote online notarization? You're going to hear it called Ron. Um, it's I call it the very simple way um, 
a marriage with DocuSign and FaceTime, because everybody knows what FaceTime is. Everybody knows what DocuSign is. And I call it a marriage of the two. So you are meeting with the notary with your webcam and you're going to actually see someone. A lot of people are like shocked when they get on the webcams like, oh, I didn't know I was still meeting with a notary. Yes, you're still seeing a notary face to face because that's what notarization is about. It's that personal appearance. And then the other part of that is signing your document in front of the notary. That's the other part that's required. So that's where you actually sign the document in front of the notary and then you follow any of your specific state guidelines. Um, every state has a little bit of different rules. So um, some have acknowledgments, some have jurats, some have um, copy certifications, and every state has different rules for the remote online notarization, and you'll follow those according to your state. Gotcha. Thank you, and thank you for that um, that explanation. Can you tell us, because uh, I know I've heard, um, what is the difference between um, e-notary and electronic signatures? and Ron, because those are two totally different things, but I hear them used interchangeably. So what's the difference between the electronic signature and Ron? All right, so there's different flavors of this. So you have what we've called our e-notary from the traditional standpoint of view. They email you your documents, you print them off, you go in front of the signer and you sign the documents. You get those e-documents, you download it. Then you have the next flavor is um, hybrids. So the signer will sign some of their documents that don't require notarization online. So the provider will send them those documents. The signer gets in front of the computer. They sign those documents electronically. The notary then still goes out as a traditional notary. They will print off the documents that require notarization. They go before the signer and they still sign those documents, mail them back. Then we have Ron, no paper, no traveling where you just um, meet before that signer and you sign all the documents in front of the signer, all your um, your deeds, all your notes, all your affidavits, all of that is now done in front of the signer electronically. One, you don't have to travel. I love that. Two, um, when I started Ron, um, Staples will call me and say, hey, you haven't ordered paper in a while. It's like, yeah, I don't need that anymore. I'm doing Ron. So, um, all those costs kind of go away when you're doing Ron, none of the paper and none of the travel, um, but then you have your technology fee. So there's a little balance there because all the software costs money to build. Um, it's nothing that I would want to go and try to figure out because the states have different things that are in place as far as making sure it's secure, making sure that your journal is um, what it needs to be. Um, every state has different rules, what's required in your journal and what's not required in your journal. And notarize as a provider, make sure that for each state, we make sure that all of those information is in your journal because we know that things go to litigation. It's going to happen. Um, and we want to make sure that you're able to provide a compliant journal to whoever's asking for that information. Gotcha. Awesome. awesome. You provide. So notarize is definitely um, protecting the notaries um, because sometimes people um, do believe that with those platforms, a notary is not protected, but it is. People mm -hmm. are protected. Um, so besides protection you know the biggest question on why people are here and why people are truly interested in getting started with notarized um is because they want to know can they make money doing it and you know i know like you said with everything you know when you're being a notary there's mm -hmm. one how much you make one it de de determines on how much work you put in um on top of you know what state you're in and the laws that regulate the fees so right. <clears throat> about you know, what? how much per, can a person actually make with being on a notarized platform? All right. So I'm going to take it from a different perspective a little bit there. I'm going to take it from not only being on notarized, but what does it cost you as a notary? Because we all know there's a cost to become a notary. When you're traditional, with that printer, that laser, that double printer, the paper, your e and o insurance. So what do you need to become a raw notary? Let's take it from that perspective. So the first thing I like to talk about is, one, you have to be a traditional notary. So that's step one. Um, the next step that you need to work on is then making sure that you have all your E and O insurances if your state requires. So some of the states have stepped up their game that you not only need your bond, but you also need E and O insurance. Why? Because you need to protect the consumer. 
So depending on what state, you may also need to purchase e &E insurance. Some of the states have also stepped up their game and they're requiring um, education. Um, I come from a state, Virginia does, doesn't require any kind of education. So I love that the states have taken the forefront to making sure that the notaries are educated in the remote online space. So you have the cost of maybe your education. Um, some states um, it's included in your package, some of them it's not. So you have that additional cost of education, you have the additional cost of E&O insurance. Um, from a notarized standpoint of view, we also required our stellar notaries to have background checks. So we have partnered with National Notary Society, with National Notary Association, and we require you to get your background check and just take the exam. So that I think is like a $79 package from a Virginia notary, and I think it's probably a little bit different state to state. Um, that's all we require you to make sure that you know what an acknowledgement, what a juret is, what a copy, what are the things that are required in your um, journal? Um, because even though we're the provider who's doing that, notaries should still do their due diligence and know what's required in their journal for their state, um, mm -hmm. your due diligence. So then the biggest piece of that is your digital signature. So you're gonna need a signature that you're gonna use on no matter what platform that you're on. So we use Identrust as that provider for your digital signature. That runs about $129 for two years. Um, and I think they have a three-year plan. It will not run concurrently with your commission. Know that it's not like um, your e &O insurance that you can get it to run concurrently with your commission if you pay for all four years or five years, depending on what state you're from and your, e &O, um, your commission is for. So that will be something that you'll have an additional cost every two years. I think they have like a $99 if you want to do it every year. So that's an additional cost that you will need to be able to do that. So know the cost that it's going to take you, $800, $700. Um, and then, of course, the other part is there's a two-step. So you have your traditional notary, and then you have to become a raw notary. So you do that one first, and then second cost. And it's usually the same cost. So if it's 40 like for Virginia, it's $45. To become a um, traditional notary is an additional $45 to become a remote online notary. So know that that's an additional cost that you'll also have. So um, now that we know how much it costs, how am I going to get that back? So um, so let's talk about the different <laughs> flavors of notaries that we have here at Notarize. So we have what we call our notary network or notary on-demand notaries. So this is where we're feeding you leads. We have different business partners that they don't have notaries on staff, but they need documents notarized. Um, if you've been on our website or on any of our blogs, PS1583s are probably our biggest ones where people are trying to get their um, mail forwarded to a provider to forward their mail to them instead of getting that mail at their home. A lot of RV folks that um, they're traveling around and they don't want mail coming to their home. Um, we do a lot of POAs. We work with TIAA. Um, we have worked with um, different providers that, like I said, they don't have them in staff. So we feed you those leads. So those leads are paid to you at $5 a notarization. And people are like, well, you're getting paid $25. How comes I only get five? Well, there's one, we're feeding you the leads. So it's just like if you work for a signing service, they get what, $175, $200, and the notary in Northern Virginia might get $100, $125. So there's that lead generation that we have to observe as well. Then there's the software cost. Um, it's not cheap to do what we're doing. I know, like I said before, I don't want to be the one to go try to figure out what everything needs to be compliant so I can go to the state and say I have a compliant platform to make sure everything's secure. So mm -hmm. that part of it. So you got to think it takes about five to 10 minutes max to do a notarization. Um, there's, a, there's a script that we provide to you. You're not required to use it, but it covers a lot of things that you're required to say for your state. Some of the states require you to say that it's an audio video technology. So that's included in that as well. Um, some of the states require for you to have the signer state their name on the video. That's included in the script. So we teach you a script that makes sure that you're doing a compliant notarization. So you've got to think five to 10 minutes, you're making $25 an hour. Um, that's great if you're still doing your traditional stuff. Fill, use this as fill in. So go ahead and fill in your time. You have downtime, jump on there, take calls. Um, that's what I did when I first started out before I moved to training and managing the notaries that are onboarding. I worked this all day long. I made a great living at it and I loved it. I had done 5,000 notarization by the time I quit almost two years ago. 
And I had only done that for a year and a half. So there is a lot of work out there. We have two or three notaries that have almost hit 20,000. And then we always, it was like, we were almost ready to have a party because that was our party number and then move into the company and doing something administratively. So there is work out there. Um, with COVID, we ramped up. Um, we went to just a few hundred to thousands of notarizations that we do a day just because of COVID and all the changes. So you have your notary on demand, and then we have what we call our BYON. So this is where business partners have their own in-staff notaries, and they bring them on board, and they um, perform their own notarizations. Then we have our new flavor, which is called BYOT, bring your own transaction. We have that right now in a pilot phase, where we have several notaries that are testing this out, making sure that we have all our I's dotted, all our T's crossed, everything that a, a notary would want to have for that part of the platform. So we started out with that part is um, you actually get $15 of it and you only have like a $10 um, cost and we're still playing around with those numbers. So don't take this as Bible of how we're going to finish this out. This is what we're doing for the pilot. Um, and then with that being said, you're going to bring your own clientele and then you'll also and then another question someone asks is okay can i still do your notary on demand because i might be still ramping up my gmp work my general notary public work and i might only have one or two but i still have two hours left during the day that i want to make some money so i want to jump on as notary on demand you're more than welcome to do that and make another 50 to 60 70 dollars depending on what kind of notarization that's coming through so that is going to be available Absolutely. You gave us the whole spill, Jacqueline. Oh, honey, that was that was the whole meal right there. The whole meal. Um, um, it, oh, you got a question, LaShawn? No, no, no. You got a question? Um, so, Sam, I don't know. I have this super chat thing happening going on right now. And um, we have Mr. Sid Smith. I don't want no one to feel like, you know, I would just ignore them. Um, Cause gotcha. I don't have to turn that off when we do our videos at all. Okay. Um, but I do want to, since Mr. Uh, Smith, he, thank you for the $20 super chat. Um, but I did want to, Oh, there we go. Um, put his question on the screen. Sam, I really can't see that too well. Can you see that? Oh, I got you. I got you, baby. I got you. It says uh, for Mr. Sid Smith, what we know is a notary is forbidden from selecting what type of notarial certificate is used for a notarial act. However, is it appropriate for a RON notary to select the notary certificate um, using the RON language or possibly during a RON transaction? All right, so great question on the notarized platform. So what we've done with the notarized platform is that we have loose leaf certificates so let's say um, you are meeting with, well, the beauty about remote online notarization, I have forgot to tell you about that, is that you're meeting signers all over the world, not over the United States, but all over the world, because remote online notarization allows you to notarize documents for a document that's used in the United States. So it's kind of like I'm at home, I get a phone call from the traditional notary, this person is from Florida, they're visiting with their family, but they have to close their loan today because of their lock expiration. So even though their property is in Florida, me as a Virginia notary, I can close that loan. Same thing. So I'm a remote online notary, someone comes in from the state of Oklahoma and they need their document notarized, I can notarize that document. So what happens to most of those documents, it's the, the notarization on the document might be for Oklahoma notary. So it doesn't follow the wording for a Virginia notary or for a Texas notary or Florida notary. So what we allow you is as a notary, you're able to add a loose leaf just like you would in real life and make sure that you have the correct notarial language for your state. Um, our platform will also block you. So for like the state of Florida example, you're not able to do a copy certification for a state of for the state of Florida as a remote online notary. That's something that the signer would still have to go to a traditional notary to get done. Why? Because um, for state of Florida, it requires a notary like Virginia to get the document, make the photocopy themselves, and then attach that loose leaf. We can't do that remote online. Uh, I mean, unless someone can figure that out, how to do that, I bless you and let us know, but that's something that you have to still do as a physical notary. So. Um, one of your choices when you click on our website is we still leave it up there because notaries like, no, I'm a Florida, Florida notary. I can do a copy cert. So we'll click, leave it on there. You'll click on it. It says, follow this link to this article of why you cannot do a copy certification as a remote online notary. So we put those things into the platform. So 
you're not shocked. You're like, okay, I know I can do a copy search traditional. And then we explain to you why you can't do this or wrong. Absolutely. So, because mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's a lot of questions in here uh, about, you know, things about state specific things. Mm -hmm. So basically, if a state is not allowed to do something, you all make sure that they can't do it. And then you also provide them with the resource um, sh showing, showing them or telling them why um, mm -hmm. they're not allowed to do this particular. A specific thing. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. what? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what determines on what state you actually work with? Um, because I know someone on here said notarized wouldn't work for me in North Carolina. So how do you you all go about picking what states you are actually able to uh, work in? All right. So right now there is 26 states that have passed remote online notarization. So we are now in the process of making sure that we're in all those states as um, the states allow remote online. So our first four states that we worked on from a notary on demand was Florida, Texas, Nevada, and Virginia. So for those states, we do the notary on demand. So you get on our platform, take a call, um, and you're able to do that because that state has passed the law. Um, I don't think North Carolina has passed their law don't quote me on that, but if they had, um, that's something that we would do on the BYON side. Um, I brought this up before, and, there, and some are like, so why haven't you opened it up to all 26 states yet? Well, there's those IC laws that we have to be concerned about. Um, everybody's heard about the Uber and the, um, the Lyft, um, how they're um, trying to make sure that are these people really employees? Are they really independent contractors? So we have limited it to the states that we're in now because we're very, we know how those states run as far as independent contractors because all of our notaries on our platform are independent contractors. And we don't want to jeopardize you and we don't want to jeopardize our business. Absolutely. Okay, okay. go ahead, Sam. No, I mean, like I could, I could ask 12 questions off of just what she said. Um, I want to take it a few steps back because I know that we may have some brand new notaries on the call. And so what would you say is the, what are some requirements for coming on as a RON? What do you suggest that notaries have skill sets, know how, what are your suggestions? All right, so from a technology standpoint of view, you're gonna make sure that you have a really good computer or a laptop. You need to make sure that you have that technology in place. You're gonna to need to make sure that you have a webcam, something that you're gonna be able to see the signer um, and be able to have that conversation. Um, you can see that all three of us are in well-lit areas. So it, make sure that you're in a well-lit area so the signer can see you. Um, the other part is you're gonna to need to make sure that you have either really good headphones or make sure that you're in a room that um, with all of us being on COVID, um, I have my kids at home. You have your kids at home. The cat, the dog, um, significant others, and you don't want that being picked up on your calls. So you wanna make sure that you're in a well-lit room, somewhere that you can have a good conversation with that signer and make sure that it's private as well. I don't want me as a, um, as the training manager, I don't wanna see your family members going through the back of your screens. This is a personal, conversation that you're having with that signer. So you want to make sure that you're in a great environment with great sound, great light, and then being able to um, being able to have a good computer. Um, then from a educational standpoint of view, know your state's law. Like I said, some states don't require you to have education. Um, when I first started out, um, Virginia doesn't require education. So I went to NNA. Um, Carol Ray, I'm sure some of you have heard of her. Um, Virginia has a, um, a local person, Bryce Hall, uh, 123 Notary. I didn't care who it was, title processing. I wanted to know everything that I could learn to make sure that I was doing a compliant notarization. Why? Um, I tell this analogy every time. You have a license. You're like a CPA. You're like an attorney. You have a license. You don't work at McDonald's. You don't work where you get fired from making uh, French fries at this McDonald's and you go to the next McDonald's and you make French fries again, you get hired there. You lose your license if you do one, any of the egregious things. Number one is not having the correct person appearing before you. You wanna make sure that you're also always making sure that the person that's appearing before you is a person that should be signing that document. Why more in remote online notarization? Because you're now being videoed. 
you have now have a video recording of you and the signer that can be used in a court of law or being used um, for any kind of things for an subpoena. subpoena. So you want to make sure that you are making sure the person before you is who they say they are. So I'm going to say that's probably my top things. Know your state's law. Know what um, what kind of things you can or cannot do for your state. Does notarize make sure that those things are in place? Yes, but I think it's still your due diligence as a notary for you to know what your state law requires of you. So I hope that's answered what you're looking for there, Ms. Sam. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, LaShawn, you want me to read that for you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, we have another question from Mr. Sid Smith. When you add a Ron language loose leaf, and uh, for those who um, he's talking about a loose leaf certificate, what happens to the original notarial certificate? All right, so if you've done traditional, it's no different. So you would do what I do um, as best practice is on the signature line where the notary would sign their name because we don't want to sign two certificates because that wouldn't be correct. I always mm -hmm. say attached certificate. I'll type it on there in the Ron Law, see attached certificate. And then that lets the person know, I'm not using the certificate here on the document. I'm going to mm -hmm. use my loose leaf certificate that uses my correct state laws language to make sure that I do a compliant notarization. Okay, that was really simple. Very, <laughs> very. So, this was a question that came up to me last night. Um, and most of my audience here, I'm in the clubhouse and they actually have some questions too. And um, I'm not an expert in Ron at all. So this is why, you know, we brought you on. But someone um, actually asked us last night, um, what are the insurance requirements for Ron? Um, but the person that asked last night, they asked about the E&O insurance. Will they have to get new E&O insurance um, to cover them when they're doing the Ron? Great question. So for some states, they are requiring um, E&O insurance. Like I know that Florida is requiring $25,000 of E&O insurance. So some states are going to require you to have E&O insurance. Like I said, mm -hmm. it's that liability they want to cover. And then if you're going to do notary on demand on our platform, we do require the $25,000 E&O insurance. Why? It protects you. It protects the signer in case anything goes wrong. You want to make sure that you have that twenty-five thousand. With that, we're also um, we have launched real estate on our platform, so that's another way that you can make an additional money. So doing closings on our platform for and um, for that, we require a hundred thousand dollars of E and O insurance. So that's a requirement of being on our platform if you're going to do any of our notary on demand. If you're going to do BYOT, we're only going to require the twenty-five thousand. And then, of course, because you're the one who's actually taking on that liability um, because you're bringing your own um, business onto our platform, it's going to be on you to decide if you want to um, have any additional insurance. Okay. Well, thank you for that information. And I want to do one more, Sam, um, because this is like a great question. Um, Very also, question. So a lot of, you know, signing agents are used to um, you know how snap docs work. Signing companies can really actually pick and choose, you know, what notaries they want to use and stuff like that. So Ms. Crystal Davis is asking, um, do you choose the people? Um, do you pick more experienced people over new notaries? So basically, you know, new notaries want to feel like if they come into that platform, are they going to be chosen over someone with more experience? Will they still get the same like same work also? All right. Great question. So what we actually do, and this is why I love Notarize. Um, when I first started at Notarize four years ago, um, we're a startup. So um, they required us to find our own training and make sure that we're trained. Um, I came into the office a year and a half. So in 2017, and I worked with the director there and we built training that we actually trained every notary on the platform. Why? Because remote online is so different. Um, it's not only the face to face, but how do you guide your computer? How do you guide a signer through that session? Um, what tools are available to you? What are, tools are available to the signer? So we actually have a training that every notary goes through and they learn all the tools, learn what the tool is from the notary side, what quick things that we can show you, what um, shortcuts on the keyboard to get that notarization done in that five to 10 minutes um, timeline, because one, you want to make money and two, the signer wants to get what they need to get done. So we go through that. 
we go through some remote online training with you and everyone doesn't matter your experience whether you have 10 years experience as a notary or you have 30 days of experience as a notary or you're just becoming a brand new notary we take you through training on how the platform is aligned with your state so how do we talk about that without getting into UPL because that's something that we have to worry from notarize um, if you are using this tool of your signature why am I going to use show you how to use this tool of signature why the signature is required on your documents so you want to be able to use the tool um, how do we walk you through on the signers tools the signer might need to date the document so the signer has tools on their side to date the document so we take no matter what your experience we take you through training and then everyone it kind of level sets everyone because I've had notaries who come on and says I didn't know that for a jurat you have to perform an oath I'm like, how long have you been a notary? Okay, so our script takes you through an example oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm on the penalties of perjury, the whole thing? Because we wanna make sure that you do a compliant notarization. Why? It's videotaped. I'm gonna always say that, it's videotaped. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that is why we wanna make sure that doesn't matter who you are, we level set everyone and everyone starts the same. Do we have different, you're gonna have, um, once you learn, if you get, use our platform, you're going to hear cues. So we have a retail queue. That's just all of our general notary public work. So we start you out there and you're just kind of just getting your sea legs on, just doing your regular notary, general notary public work. After you've done so many of those, then we um, level you up to the next level where you're actually talking to our business partners, um, customers. So we want to make sure that you feel comfortable first before we throw you into um, our business partners documents. After you've done so many of those, then we have an additional training that's called our closing training. So you'll go through um, what closing documents you're gonna see, how the, um, our different business partners want you to handle their different part business, their documents, and then we'll do real estate training with you, and then you start that queue. So we make sure that you're trained along the way. And I said, and I, that, like I said, that's what I like the best about Notarize, that we train the notary so they feel comfortable when they're starting out. Gotcha. We got some really good questions populating over in the chat. Um, LaShawn, can you pull one up? If not, I, I have a question I yeah. can ask while you pull it up. Um, can you explain the difference? I know there's some chatter in Georgia about uh, hearing that there are some notaries doing Ron, some notaries can't do Ron. Mm -hmm. Uh, really, we're just waiting on legislation to pass to find out how they're going to implement Ron. So can you tell us the difference between someone uh, working as an independent notary versus, you know, already having access to the Ron platform? You can't be on the platform at all until your state passes legislation. So gotcha. um, there shouldn't be any notaries in the state of Georgia that are doing raw notarizations. Um, I know that there were some executive orders that were in place. I don't know what um, Georgia's executive order was in place, but I think most of those executive orders are, some are still in place, some of them have expired depending on your state. Um, I have to say they were very loose um, because we were in a moment of crisis. So, um, and I know that it was just like they said, temporary, temporary executive orders. And then they want to get back to what remote online notarization, which is that secure um, recorded session with all the compliance steps of the journal, the video, and then of course, identifying the signer. So I know we didn't kind of talk about that, um, but identifying the signer is very important with all the RON legislation. Um, when you are meeting with a signer, you normally would have them show your ID, um, passport, driver's license. You would look at that. You might have your little book um, to make sure that you're not having a fraudulent ID. Um, so you would have that with remote online notarization. The ID goes actually through a credential analysis. So it looks at the front of the ID, the back of the ID. Um, have we had IDs that are um, that have been found to be fraudulent? Yes, um, and actually on the notarized platform, it actually blocks that signer to even before even they get to the notary. So I like that part that I don't have to waste my time um, before a signer. 
um, and then figure out that the ID is fraudulent. That's done on the front end on the on notarized, and then the signer has to either um, find another ID um, mm -hmm. that will be able to be used. That's not that's not fraudulent. Um, the other part of that is um, KBA. So KBA is knowledge based authentication. So uh, most of us have gotten a car, bought a house, um, gotten some kind of credit card. Um, so based on all that information, um, Lexus Nexus is who we use. They use all that banking information of you and ask you five questions, questions that you normally wouldn't find on um, your Facebook. Um, like what kind of, who did you purchase your car from back in 2016? Um, that's not something I'm going to find about you on Facebook. Um, what type of car did you purchase? Um, uh, who do you bank with? When did you open a bank account? All those very personal PII questions, um, those questions are generated. And the rule is that you have to pass um, four of the five questions, not something that Notarize puts in place. This is at the state level. The state levels put in how many of those questions you have to answer. Some are three or five, four or five, depends on your state. And then they also implement how many times you can do that. So some states implemented that it's only two times. So if you fail it the first time, you got you can come back through and take those questions again. If you fail them, you are locked out of the system for 24 hours. So it's not at notarized level, that is at the state level. So a lot of people get upset with us and they're like, well, what? I don't understand. Why are you guys locking us out? It's not us. We follow what the state tells us to do. So you'll get locked out for 24 hours. So people are like, so what if my closing has the closing close today? A lot of people are like, remote notaries are going to take all of our work from us. No. If a signer gets locked out, what's the other way you have to do? You have to do traditional. You're going to have to call a notary really quick and be like, hey, can you go meet such and such right now or two hours from now so they can still close their loan? So it's remote online is going to make a lot of things a lot more secure, but you're going to still have to have the traditional notary to do um, closings in those instances. Gotcha. Absolutely. So, <laughs> Sam, I know, was there a specific question that you wanted to ask in the comments? Because um, I did want to, um, I know we talked about it a little bit, but I've seen a question come up in the comments about the journals. Um, about, yeah. yes, people want to know well, not the journal, but well, similar to the journal. So some people want to know exactly how does that record keeping process work? Um, I think I'm frozen or something um, a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, it, people want to know how that process works on, you know, when you do your loan signings, you know, they sign. Um, some states require them to actually do the thumbprint. So how does that process plays out online? Um, and then also, too, how long are people required to keep? you know, those videos and everything. Wonderful. These are great questions. So the journal gets populated, I like to say, synchronously as you're going through that session with the signer. So when the signer started that session and they uploaded their ID information, the system scans it and whatever your state requires. So if the state requires their name and address in your journal, we already populate that information in your journal. Um, if you performed an acknowledgement or a jurat or a copy cert, depending on your state, we're also populating that in your journal as you're going along. As you're putting the seals on your document, it's populating your journal as you're going along. Um, let's say that for your state, if you needed a credible witness, uh, we get that information. Your credible witness comes through. We gather the information that's required for your credible credible witness. And that also goes in your journal. So at the end of the session, when you hit complete, your journal is now done. It has your video. It has whatever your state requires. We, um, in it's by state, we know it, each state's requirement. We make sure your state has that requirement. And then depending on how long your state, some states are requiring five years, some requiring seven, some requiring 10. So depending on what your state is, we're making sure that you have that journal. The other part to that is some notaries are like, some states are going to still require the provider, us, notarized to keep your journal and your video, but it's also requiring some states are requiring the notaries to download their journal and their videos. So we're also going to be, we also allow you to download that information, flash drive, your computer, your virtual, whatever it is, Dropbox that you may use to store that information. So we as a provider are required to keep that for the notary. And then some states um, require the notary to also download it. So it's kind of like a double um, a double place that the place, um, the information is kept in two places. 
So if your state doesn't require you to download it, you can use us as your provider um, because we know that all that stuff takes space. Videos take space. You gotta think a closing could last 30 to 45 minutes. So you have that whole video that you'd have to save um, so they require the providers to keep that information for the notary. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's um, that's good to know that everyone will be protected. The videos will be saved. And at the end of the day, it's always our duty to make sure that we keep track of our records, mm-hmm. even though notarized is holding on to their records, you know, that because, you know, they protect themselves. Um, mm-hmm. But as a notary, you always have to protect yourself. And even when yeah. you're doing regular notarizations, um, you always want to protect yourself and make sure that you are doing the right thing and keeping track of your records because anything can happen. And it's, you know, people do a lot of he say, she say, um, and you don't want to ever be in a situation where it's he say, she say, you want to be in a situation where you can present some actual facts. Um, so that way you don't get involved in anything. Um, so I know everyone, you know, they're excited about Vaughn. They want to get started, but a lot of people struggle with marketing. Um, with someone being on your platform with Notarize, um, how can they actually market um, their wrong being a wrong notary? All right. So for right now, um, like I said, we're just doing the notary on demand. We are working through the pilot of the BYOT. And with those notaries, we have worked with them and they can have um, our logo um, powered by Notarize. So we provide you all the literature that you will need to use on your website, on your LinkedIn. We have Instagram, whichever social media um, venue that you want to use, we have um, all that information built into a site that you would go and download and market yourself, saying that I am a RON provider. Um, also, with that, we give you um, API links, which um, you would put on your website, click on this link, it will take them directly to you, to your site. So, we have all that marketing built into our website that you'll be able to just take it and just plug and play right into your social media. So let me ask you a question because you spoke some tech things there <laughs> um, because I know I know what API is, you know, but a lot of my audience, you know, we're at basic level right now. We know we're trying to figure out how to turn on the computer and get on the Internet type of thing, you know. So exactly how um, easy it is for someone to put the API on their website. Um, just- you get the instructions, correct? Or, uh, you get instructions, but it's a real quick of just you down. You just copy the link and plug it onto your whether, like I said, whether it be your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your website. Um, there are instructions built in on exactly walk you through it. Um, and then we also have a great customer support team. Um, I love our customer support team. They are versed in um, if you're in a session and you're having some kind of tech difficulty. Um, there's a little wonderful help icon on the bottom right. You click on them and you get LinkedIn um, directly with one of our customer rep persons. Um, they're usually there from eight in the morning to midnight Eastern time. So, and of course, as we expand across the country, we'll expand those hours, but eight to 12 seems to work really well for our team. And you're able to connect with someone if you're having any kind of tech difficulties. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have, what, where are we at, 45 minutes? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, you, you honestly, you jam packed a lot within this forty five. Yes. And yes. Some of the questions that we have is like you, you know, you actually answered a lot of the questions um, already. Um, so someone asked, I know to get signed. So for people to get started and signed up with Notarize, just so I can clarify in my mind, they go to Notarize dot com and they can sign up through that. All right. So go to Notarize dot com. Scroll all the way to the bottom of that page. There's going to be a special link that says Notaries. And when you get to that, it's going to tell you all the requirements that you're going to need. It walks you through. um, You need your traditional notarization. You need your online notarization. It walks you through your ident trust. Um, There's a link for your state to do everything. There's seven or eight steps. You just go through all those seven, eight steps. Once you have all that, click on the link. Takes you through our wonderful wizard. And the wizard takes you step by step, filling in your commission information, your online information. When does your information expire? Because our system also keeps track of when you need to do things. So you'll get 30 days out from, let's say, your ENO expiring. We'll send out a notice saying, hey, you're 30 days out from your ENO expiring. Make sure you get that done so that you're able to continue doing work on our platform. You're 30 days from your commission expiring. Hey, 
your 30 days out. So all our, our system is built in to give you also reminders of all the things that you need to do to make sure that you stay as a compliant remote online notary. Awesome, Sam. <laughs> Look, um, we, we don't ever want to discourage a notary from participating in new opportunities, especially Ron, because it's so hot. It is. But there will be states that will pass the law. We are hoping that, you know, Georgia gets on the bandwagon, as I'm sure other states who currently aren't with Ron, they're just hoping. But let's be honest. Is there is there a recommendation or is there a point in a notary's career that you might say, you know what, this might not be the opportunity for you? You know, how would you guide that notary into making that decision that this isn't the opportunity for them? So we have had, um, we've had notaries that they're just not tech savvy. It, you still need to have some tech savvy. You have to know how to run an app. You have to know how to um, use a computer. Is it simple enough that a 75 year old person could use it? Yeah, we have some aged persons on our websites. It just takes you, how much do you want to make sure you take the time to learn technology? Because it does require technology. I'm not bashing anybody, but I had someone who came through for training that had like an iPhone 5 and refused to move up because she felt really comfortable with it. It did what she needed to do, but with technology, it changes all the time. Just like we're moving from traditional, we're moving to run. It's going to take you as a person to want to move to with technology. Like I said, there will still be traditional. I told that notary, you're, you're not you don't feel comfortable with the tech. She didn't feel comfortable with tech. I told her, I don't think it's good. It's not going to, she got so nervous when she tried to do a notarization. So I say, why don't you just stay with traditional? Like I said, there's going to be those times where people don't pass KBA. You're going to still need the traditional notary. So those mm -hmm. are the things that I tell you have to stay up with tech. And if you can't stay up with tech, stay traditional. Uh, yeah, that's that's some great advice right there. And I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> no iPhone fives. Uh, the battery doesn't last on those either no more. You know, so um, sometimes we do have to upgrade and grow with technology. Um, I'm, I'm selfish myself, so I can understand. Um, so I'm going to put someone's questions on here because we're going to wrap it up shortly here. Uh, to, to, is that it? Um, Sam, can you read that? Cause that's a lot. I can't really see it all. No problem. It says, uh, it says, please explain how I can notarize for others in another state doing Ron. Isn't your commission limited to just your state? So I kind of talked about that a little bit earlier. It's the same thing like traditional. Um, I'm in Virginia and someone from Florida comes to visit me and their or visit their family member and they have to close that loan so i'm going to close that loan for them here in virginia it's the same on remote online notarization i am a remote online notary in virginia my body is in virginia but i can notarize a document because of the fear fear act trade act back from the 1800s this was done in place um a great analogy that our team uses is um is marriage i get married in virginia i go to state of florida does that mean that I'm not no longer married? No, that marriage moves with me because I was in a state that I followed what their law requires. So now I'm married in the state of Virginia and I moved to the state of Florida. I'm still married. I don't have to go back and get married again in Florida. So the same thing with the notarization. I do a notarization here in Virginia. It is not being able to use anywhere in the United States. Um, kind of going a little bit off tangent, but it's kind of like the apostille. Some notaries know about apostille. So that's where you get that additional seal from your state. And now that document is not being able to use overseas. So it's the same thing. There's laws in place that allows you as a notary to notarize a document in your state. And that document can now be used in a different state. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we want to get I want to get oh. a little bit on that. Oh, your closings were a little bit different. So there are some states that require that closing to be done in that state. So once again, our our platform is built that if that state requires a closing, requires that notary state closing, that um, closing will only go to that state. So I just want to throw that out there as well. Gotcha. Uh, we have a next question that says, just to clarify, 
E-notary is different from Ron, but we still need an additional $25,000 bond to do either of these, right? So Ron, E-notary is more traditional, right? Um, so that's your traditional work or your hybrid work. So you'd have to know what the provider requires for E-notary. Ron is different that Ron, depending on one, if you're on our platform, I'm gonna, we're gonna require you 25 anyway. And then of course, then you have your state requirements. So state requirements would even override us. So let's say that Georgia decides that you need a $50,000 um, ENO insurance in order to become a raw notary. So even though I require notarized requires 25,000, we're gonna to have to make sure that you have 50,000. So we're gonna do whatever the state requires first. And then, um, then if doesn't meet our standard for ENO insurance, then we'll do that. Know that there's a difference between ENO insurance and bond. So there's a difference between the two. Some states require a bond. Texas requires a bond. Arizona requires a bond. Some states require a bond. Virginia doesn't require a bond. So some states require a bond and ENO. Florida for a remote. It requires that $7,500 bond and then it requires a 25,000 ENO insurance. So there's a difference between the two. Okay. okay. <clears throat> and then I know you, we kind of touched on the technology piece a little bit, but um, I've seen it come up like three or four times um, as far as, you know, with the type of computer. Um, is there a certain type of computer a person needs to have um, to have or any type of specifications that they should have on their computer so that they're able to do um, the remote online notarizations? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. if, we're, um, if you're a notary on the notarized platform, um, we require you to not to use a tablet. Um, you can use a Surface because that's still considered a tablet, but it still runs as a computer. So make sure that you have a laptop or you have a computer. And if you're using um, one of the, like, those Microsoft Surfaces, that you have a keyboard because you're going to do, do a lot of typing. So make sure that you have a keyboard. Um, the other part of that is your internet. Um, you're going to need a really good internet. What's really good internet? Um, we require 10 up, 10 down. Not a lot. Most people could get 10 up and 10 down. Um, so that's our requirement from uh, internet. So you got to make sure that you either have Fios, you have cable internet, um, your hotspot too spotty. That's my personal, um, because you got to make sure that you want to keep that session going from the beginning to the end with a signer. You want to make sure that your connection's great. Your signer's connection may not be as great, but you're the professional here. So you want to make sure that you have your game 100% in place. Gotcha. Look, this is this has been such like I'm sitting here like I don't I, I've been kind of looking I'm writing notes and stuff and and we're not even ready for Ron in Georgia yet. But um, I want to encourage everybody that's on the chat start typing in your takeaways. What are the big ahas, the takeaways that you've gotten? from today's uh, presentation. And I know it's, it's a lot of information in a short amount of time, but what's that one thing that has stuck with you today? And um, I'll be honest, my takeaway is really to make sure I stay up on my state laws. Because at the end of the day, Ron is a company, but they are not our state legislation. And it really depends on what our individual states put into place about Ron. Say for instance, and I'm, you know, I'm Georgia all day, um, and keeping up with it, we I know that Georgia is uh putting out there that uh, yes, we'll have to take a take a test. So the education piece that you talked about, that's gonna be required. What's gonna also be required for Georgia is a two thousand dollar bond. So while we may not need a bond as just a standard Georgia notary, we will need a bond if we apply to be a Ron notary. And again, this has not passed. This is just a part of the legislation. If you want to kind of follow Georgia stuff or any of your state stuff, don't just focus on your secretary of state or your clerk's office. Go to your state bar associations as well to kind of see um, where they are in the processes of, um, you know, creating something else for um, for Ron. And then lastly, for Georgia, um, something else that's kind of new for us is going to be the fact that Ron transactions, we may be able to charge upwards of $25 for the Ron transactions. So 
keep up with your state laws. We're going to continue to dig through Georgia stuff just to just to stay, you know, in line with um, whatever the final decision is, whether it passes or it doesn't, or how it passes. So I'm interested to see what some of these takeaways are. Oh, thank you. Uh, Bond insurance differs from E and O insurance. That's someone's takeaway. That's huge because some people may not know they're two different things. Okay. Um, is my am I okay? So my takeaway, honestly, is that um, because at first I wasn't, you know, I'm gonna say not educated, but I wasn't fully aware on how Notarize um is helping. I just know it's a platform um that you know, but people can use. But now I'm sitting here listening. To be honest, I feel like it's an amazing platform for anybody that's brand new that know that, that they want to get into Ron and they're not sure how to do anything. So I feel like this is a way for someone to build that confidence up so that maybe they can become um, an independent Ron um, notary because you you provide everything. You're providing the training. You're showing them how to do it. You're t providing them the resources on what they can and cannot do in their state. You provide scripts. And I feel like this is the perfect way. Same thing like in loan signings. Um, you know, I always tell people, start off with general notary work, learn the process, get comfortable with it. And notarize is basically allowing people who are brand new, who have no clue how to use their computers or anything, teaching them, allowing them to get comfortable enough to where though they can be, become independent. They can flip flop, you know, do what they want to do. But I feel like this is the perfect platform for anyone that is, really wants to get started, to start off with Notarize, and if you want to go somewhere else, that's your choice. But start off here at the very beginning, because they're like the signing companies, they're going to take care of you, baby you, you know, and everything like that. So that's my takeaway um, from this. Mm -hmm. I have to say, you ladies have been awesome. Um, I do like to like tell a little bit, like they're like, okay, so what's it like to be a remote notary? So we talked about all of the processes in place. So one of my favorite, I did a lot of general notary public work. So um, meeting people from all over the world has been, because everyone says, okay, I'm not gonna get to be in front of a person anymore. I'm gonna lose that touch. No, now you're gonna see people from everywhere. I had a gentleman who was out of the country, needed to sign a document. He was in Dubai. Um, he happened to be outside and he was on his iPhone and he was signing a power of attorney on his cell phone. And I'm like, that looks really pretty out there. He's like, yeah. So he pans me his phone. I got to see Dubai from Virginia. <laughs> it was beautiful. And I'm like, okay, add that to the bucket list of places to go. Um, I've been in Virginia when it's dreary and cold. And then um, I get a Florida person and you can see, and I'm like, oh, where are you from? And they're like, I'm from Florida. He's like, do you want to see what Florida looks like? And I'm like, sure. And they'll pay you and you're doing your work and you get to see places, meet people. Um, it's been amazing. You have the customers that you're going to get to know that are regulars on the platform and you get to talk to them all the time. They're like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, how are you doing? Or I had the attorney who's like, I was working the seven to seven shift. I I love remote online. So he came in one morning, like eight o'clock on a Saturday it's morning. It's 12 o'clock. Like, How it's you, how are you doing? He's like, now how late are you gonna work today? I was like, well, I work till seven. He's like, well, I'm off at 12. And I was like, so we you get to know your regulars that use remote online notarization and you have a lot of fun with it. I mean, like I said, anytime I as a notary can, me as now a manager, I crave to get back on there just because of the people experience that I have learned to have with the remote online organization. Awesome. I need to go to the bar too. <laughs> I know that's right. We coming. <laughs> well, Miss uh, Jacqueline, you know, I wouldn't say that was an official closeout, but what, how would you close us out today? What would you share with our audience just as a, you know, just a reminder, some encouragement, give it to the people. I'm going to say, you, Sam, you already said it. Know what your state flaws are. Be that person to push remote online notarization for your state. Um, if anything, COVID has shown us that traditional is not always going to work. We've had people in hospitals that have come on that had to have POAs done. Um, we couldn't be with them. Um, we've had people that have just need those life moments, wills that they've had to do because of what we have going on. 
in our world, not just the United States, in our world. And notaries are the ones that was that that's that connecting piece that needed to happen between the paperwork and that person. We brought that care that was needed during the times that we're in right now. And remote online notaries did a lot of that. I can't tell you how many Twitter reviews, how many Apple reviews of how the notary was there in the nick of time for them. So know your state law, be one of those that are pushing or trailblazing remote online notarization. Know that it's not only going to be traditional. You can do both. You can do both. Um, and just I love it. Like I said, I love remote online notarization. It doesn't matter what platform you're on, you're providing a service to the community. Okay. Well, MS Mobile Notary has confirmed it. We're all going to Dubai together. So let's, you know, pick a date so we can go ahead and get on the road. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, thank you so much for bringing Notarized to sign and sealed and to you know, clearing up some information. I hope everyone takes this information out, watch your replays, share it with your Facebook groups. We got it directly from the source and we are so excited and honored that you were able to join us today. Mr. Sean, as always, you are absolutely amazing, darling. Um, Miss Jacqueline, if you don't mind hanging out with us for a few minutes once we, um, once we go stop going live, LaShawn, go ahead and take us home. Yeah, so everyone, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jacqueline, um, for providing uh, us with your time and helping out notaries on this information of how your platform actually truly support notaries. And now I am a true fan of Notarize. Yeah. Um, and because I have a lot of students who want to get started, and I've I'm, I mean, you know, I was wondering like, well, where can I tell them to go? I know the process, but who could I trust that I feel like they're going to take right. my students on the right path mm -hmm. and do the right thing, um, you know, in this notary world. And I truly believe that Notarize um, is doing that for people. Yeah. So I would like to thank you. And maybe we look forward to seeing you again um, on another episode here um, because it's so much information and, um, you know, I'm just, I'm grateful that you're here. So thank you, um, everyone. Thank you for being here. My internet is definitely going in and out right now, um, but I am thankful. And so people do want to know how to contact you. So um, in order to contact um, Jack uh, Jacqueline, you actually just, well, you don't, Jacqueline, you want to give your contact information? I know oh. you said Notarize. Okay. Yeah, Notarize. Uh, but you can just contact me at Jacqueline at Notarize.com. Um, oh. the best way to reach me, um, shoot me an email. I will um, respond to you with any questions that you have. Um, of course, our website is a wealth of knowledge. Um, Notarize.com. There's um, the Knowledge Center. Um, it, like I said, it'll walk you through step by step on what you need to become a remote online notary, and then make sure that you have all those things in place. And then once you sign up on our platform, our training. Um, get you through. I have to say that I trained all the trainers that are on the, on the training. So it makes me a little bit proud um, that um, I'm making sure that you're getting class training to make sure that you're doing a compliant notarization. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that information, Jacqueline. Um, I did put your information inside of the chat um, for everyone that's watching right now. The replay will be available. Um, you won't have to give it a minute because we went an hour long and it takes YouTube a little time to download it. But um, you will, if you're on the email list, you will receive that link. Um, also, I will make sure to put it out on the Facebook page so that way everyone can watch the replay. And I'm thank you everybody for being here, Sam. I don't I don't want to forget about you. Uh, thank you for being here. You know, we carve out this time. I'm grateful. Um, for everything and everyone um, thank you for watching us and we look forward to seeing you all um, when next month we we'll sign the seal with another episode and another amazing guest and thank you again yes. um, Jacqueline no problem thank you all righty <laughs>